Uh, hi, my name is Lorenzo Long and I'm an nephrologist in training and a postdoctoral fellow at uh, the ISWMM study. And I want to tell you about uh, my study that's about uh, defining new reference intervals for serum-free light chains in individuals with reduced kidney function. And uh, well, the serum-free light chain measurement has become the hallmark of for detection, prognostication, and monitoring of lipoproliferative disorders. And, and we know that uh, serum FLC levels are heavily dependent on kidney function as they are renally excreted. Uh, and chronic kidney disease or impaired kidney function and monoclonal gammopathies are very common uh, disorders and both increase with age. So this problem, the, the evaluation of, or, or, or yeah, interpretation of, of the results of FLC uh, FLC levels in individuals with decreased kidney function is a very common and yeah, it's a very common clinical problem. Um, so the kappa light chains and the light lambda light chains there, they there's a little there's a little bit of difference in how they are excreted at a normal at a normal rate and and when the kidney function decreases, then the, there's another system, the reticular endothelial system that takes a little bit over in the excretion and and this the, the the ratio between the the kappa and the lambda changes um, in short um uh there has previously been published a kidney reference interval for the flc ratio the ratio between kappa and lambda and 0 0.37 to 3.1 but uh, no kidney reference interval has has been published for the absolute values of kappa or lambda but we need to have uh, uh, both of those uh, uh, abnormal to 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 detect uh, a truly uh, to, uh, that truly suggests a monoclonal disorder and the prevalence of light chain monoclonal gammopathy of uh, undetermined significance or light chain amicus is is unknown in the in individuals with ckd uh, and how are the, the current references defined? They were the standard reference intervals for kappa, lambda, and FLC ratio were based on 282 uh, healthy individuals without kidney disease. These are the standard references, uh, and was just they chose the central 95% uh, as as a normal, and the the, the bottom 2.5% and and above 97.5% were considered abnormal. Uh, had, however, the kidney reference interval that, that's been published, that was uh, based on 688 individuals that had kidney disease, but where were, uh, multiple myeloma had been excluded. But, uh, uh, but they used the whole range of, 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 of their levels as normal. So everybody, so we get a very wide interval of FC ratio that's considered normal in kidney disease. But we know that uh, there is it has not been validated in in individuals with with other monoclonal gammopathies than my, myeloma and and not in in individuals with mildly impaired kidney kidney, kidney, kidney disease so we it's a whole spectrum of 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 of, uh, of both kidney disease and monoclonal gammopathies that, that that this doesn't really don't have much data on um so the aim of this study was to define and improve the reference intervals for kappa, lambda, and the FLC ratio, and assess this for various degrees of decreased kidney function. Also to assess its effect on the prevalence of light in MQs among CKT patients. So this was the study, it was the ISTOMMM study, where 75,422 were screened with uh, protein electrophoresis, immunofixation, and the FLC ratio. And as and kappa and lambda, we had creatinine measurements to own that were, were had uh, had uh, uh, measurements that were uh, more than one year from the screening, and and those that ha had uh, normal kidney function. So this this was six thousand and five hundred individuals that had kidney disease and were without evidence of monoclonality. Uh, this is how we defined it. It's pretty much we used the central 95% uh, reference interval and divided, uh, split up the intervals based on, on the rate of abnormality between subgroups. Um, yeah, and we defined light as its 
defined by abnormal FSC ratio and absolute level of, of free or of, of involved free life chain without evidence of heavy chain or end organ damage uh, from uh, plasmacell proliferative disorder. Uh, and our, the results were, were that, uh, as we see here, that this on the left, we see the, the, the rate of uh, or the distribution of the free kappa levels, uh, and we divide it by kidney function, it's 45 to 59, 30 to 44, and then below 30. And as we see that the green lines are the current standard reference intervals. Uh, and we see that uh, for kappa on the left, the lambda in the center, and then the FLC ratio on the right, we see that uh, there's, there is need for improved uh, reference intervals for, for in this subgroup of patients that have decreased kidney function. Uh, the brown lines on the, on the figure on the right, they, they display the, the renal reference range which is very wide and it doesn't really capture, uh, in, in our opinion, doesn't really capture the, the true uh, light chain amicus uh, phenotype. And here we have uh, uh, another thing I can, can see, maybe uh, mention is that, uh, that all, all of these uh, free light chains, both kappa and the lambda and the FLC ratio, they they increased with decreasing kidney function uh, as expected. Um, yeah. Here we have, uh, have proposed our proposed new reference intervals for kappa, lambda, and the FLC ratio. And we stratified the, the reference intervals by kidney function that is from EGFR 45 to 59, which is the mildest form, 30 to 44, and then below 30. And as you can see, uh, the standard reference intervals before was for, for kappa was 3.3 to 19.4. And we have for the mildest form is, is we suggest uh, a 10.0 to 47.0. So that's quite, quite higher. Uh, there's, yeah, it's quite, it's quite a change in these reference intervals for these patients. And here we assess how this affects uh, the prevalence of light chain amicus in chronic kidney disease uh, uh, and compared it to how, how to the prevalence when we defined it based on the standard reference intervals and it increased uh, for all both the kappa and lambda light chain amicus uh, for all, all groups of uh, kidney disease uh, and the total prevalence increased from 0.7% to 1.2% in the whole group of, of patients with kidney disease. So the, the conclusions of, of our study was that uh, using this, this large data set, the largest data set uh, on, on screened individuals with monoclonal gomopathies uh, and, and, and estimation of light chains, uh, serum free light chains, uh, and concurrent estimation where we when we measure kidney function using creatinine measurements, we 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 can uh, conclude that the current reference intervals for serum FLC and FLC ratio are inaccurate for patients with impaired kidney function, and we this this leads to underdiagnosis of plasma cell dyscrasia in CKD patients. Therefore, we propose these new reference intervals for serum free light chains and the free light chain ratio that's to be used in patients with reduced uh, kidney, fun kidney function and uh, this these novel reference intervals uh, increase the sensitivity for monoclonal gomopathies and lead to a higher prevalence uh, rate estimation of of light chain amicus in patients with kidney disease so uh, this is i believe this is a very important uh, change in this subgroup of patients that has as uh, kidney disease and uh, monoclonal gomopathies, as I think it's probably underdiagnosed in, in this subgroup of patients. And, and this, this common clinical problem is, uh, I hope this helps uh, clinicians trying to figure out uh, how, to, uh, how to assess uh, the, uh, patients with chronic kidney disease and monoclonal gomopathies. Yeah, thank you. I would like to thank, of course, my 
the, the collaborators and the, the ISTO of MM team for this uh, great work and, and, and of course the patients that contributed to this, uh, to this uh, large study in Iceland. Thank you.